We know a lot about Mars because it is one of the most explored bodies in our solar system. It is the fourth planet from the Sun and has a rusty red appearance as well as two unusual moons. The red planet, a cold desert world in our solar system, is far from dull. The planet has a very thin atmosphere, but it's filled with dust and sand. It's a desolate place, but it's not without its beauty. Befitting the red planet's bloody color, the Romans named it after their god of war. Other civilizations also typically gave the planet names based on its color. The Egyptians named it Herdesher, meaning the red one, while ancient Chinese astronomers dubbed it the fire star. To this day, it is no surprise that this little red rock continues to intrigue scientists as they continuously study its phenomenal dust storms that can grow so large, they engulf the entire planet. Its temperatures can get so cold that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere condenses directly into snow or frost. And Mars quakes, a Mars version of an earthquake, that regularly shake things up. These are just a few of the many incredible things that Mars is known for. Scientists have learned a lot about Mars from the past 30 years of lander, rover, and orbiter missions. They have confirmed the existence of past water on the Martian surface, that Mars was once a habitable planet, and that it once had a thicker atmosphere than it does today. One of the biggest unanswered questions about Mars has finally been answered as NASA's Mars rover, Perseverance, uncovered proof of how Mars has an oxidized atmosphere and a red sky. This discovery has changed our understanding of the planet forever. The color of the sky on Mars has been observed for centuries, but it wasn't until the 1960s that NASA's Mariner 4 mission captured the first close-up images of the planet's surface and atmosphere. Since then, NASA's Viking and Curiosity missions have made important discoveries, including the recent Perseverance rover, providing us with more detailed data and images of the Martian environment. Perseverance has confirmed earlier theories that dust devils and storms cause dust from the surface to circulate through the atmosphere, giving Mars its signature red tinge. The surface of Mars is red due to the presence of rocks and dust containing significant amounts of iron, which in turn has oxidized or rusted in layman's terms, causing the surface to become red. The atmosphere and surface of Mars must be interacting for both to have a similar color. The latest Mars rover, Perseverance, has found proof of that. The color of a planet's sky is dependent upon two factors, the chemicals in the atmosphere and the angle at which sunlight hits the atmosphere. On Earth, the sky is blue due to a process known as quantum Rayleigh scattering. This occurs when sunlight hits the Earth's atmosphere at just the right angle to cause the scattering of blue light, hence the color of our atmosphere. Interestingly, the Martian sky is naturally a bluish-black tinge, which is very different from its occasional red sky. Like the surface, the skies above Mars are red. The most likely explanation is that the surface and atmosphere are constantly interacting through dust storms. Dust storms and strong winds cause red dust on the surface to circulate through the atmosphere, causing Mars to have a red sky. Since Mars is constantly experiencing dust storms somewhere on the surface, the dust in the atmosphere is always replenished before it can fall back to the surface. Although this explanation is the most likely, scientists have yet to observe any such interaction occurring between the surface and the atmosphere. That is until the Perseverance rover confirmed these explanations. We can learn an awful lot about a world by looking at its atmosphere. On Earth, the optical properties of sunlight passing through our atmosphere tell us about its composition, reflectivity, density, and much more. If our atmosphere were significantly thinner and less dense, the sky would be less blue, sunsets would be less red, and the sky, overall, would be far less bright. Observe this photo of al takadam Air Base in Iraq, taken during a sandstorm on Earth. Does this photograph remind you of photos you've seen of Mars? Depending on which photos of Mars you're thinking of, the answer might be yes, but you might also be thinking that the sky should be redder, rather than more yellow. Here's another photograph, taken during a sandstorm in an unidentified desert in May of 2006. Neither of these photos were taken anywhere near sunset, 
but they were taken under very specific conditions here on Earth. They were taken when there were large amounts of particulates in the atmosphere. If you've ever been in a location where there are large amounts of smog, air pollution, or nearby forest fires, you've likely experienced similar conditions to what either a desert sandstorm or the Martian atmosphere looks like. The reason Mars looks so different from what we expected before we ever visited this world is because of the prevalence of dust, not only on the red planet's surface, but throughout the Martian atmosphere. Sure, sometimes Mars has dust storms which intensify this effect even further, and sometimes there are greater or lesser densities and sizes of dust which can alter what we see. But it isn't simply a transparent atmosphere like we normally have on Earth, the dust is suspended throughout it, which explains why distant sights appear obscured. Because the dust particles on Mars are large, blue light is primarily absorbed, which means that the light reflected off of the dust grains is going to be primarily red. Because there are so many particles, the Martian sky is going to be much brighter than we would have expected if no dust were present. NASA's Viking missions way back in the early 1970s got an up-close glimpse of Mars' atmosphere from space. The red glow of Mars was clearly visible from tens of thousands of miles away and blocked much more light than if there were no dust on Mars. Perseverance has become the first Mars rover to directly observe dust from the surface being lifted into the atmosphere by dust devils. During the rover's first 216 days on Mars, it detected an average of one dust devil per day. Perseverance was equipped with dust sensors that were able to detect and track dust clouds that were raised into the atmosphere by dust devils. Perseverance also found that wind has played an important role in transferring dust into the atmosphere. Although high daytime winds are not as common as dust devils, when they do occur, they can cover an area up to 10 times larger than a dust devil. High-speed winds whip up dust from the surface and raise it into the atmosphere. Interestingly, the amount of dust raised into the atmosphere depends on where you are on Mars. The Mars lander, InSight, which landed in a different location than Perseverance, has not observed the same amount of storms lifting dust into the atmosphere. As of yet, scientists do not know why the amount of dust being lifted is different across the Martian surface, yet continued observations by Perseverance may reveal an answer in the future. The takeaway from this video is, the atmosphere of Mars is not dense enough for Rayleigh scattering to be the sole cause of the bright red color. Dust particles, kicked up by relentless dust storms, fill the atmosphere with particles of oxidized iron. The light then bounces off these particles creating a red tinge in the sky. Since dust storms are not uniform across the planet, neither is the color of the atmosphere. This is why images from Mars rovers show differences in the color of the sky. Decades of evidence back this up. You cannot apply the physics of Earth's atmosphere to Mars and expect to get a sensible result. As we all should know, Mars is, quite literally, a whole new world. That's it for today's video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fun and informative videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.